All right, for 11A, we got one of these that we have to graph, and you're going to have all this information provided on your test, all these different blanks we want to fill in. A zero is the same thing as a y-intercept. That's just what makes each individual piece equal to zero. The first one, we have uh, x. So the part that makes that zero is going to be just zero. The next one is going to be a two. And then this one is going to be uh, negative two. Uh, for the y-intercept, the y-intercept is when you have a zero in for x. So if I plug a zero into this x right here, it'll just give me a zero for the entire thing. So I know that my y-intercept is going to be zero. Next, we want to do the multiplicities. Multiplicities would be the factors, uh, the, uh, the powers that are on each of the factored pieces. The first one, I can consider, consider this all one term here, point to x. The power on that is one, so multiplicity is one. The next one, multiplicity would be two. And then here, the multiplicity would be 3. So I just get the powers off of the factored pieces. And then a test, you'll have something that's already going to be factored for you, so that way you can get the multiplicities right away. Now, the degree you get by adding the multiplicities together. So if I add that together, I'm going to get a degree of 6. The max number of turning points is always going to be 1 less than your degree, and so that's going to be 6 minus 1 will be 5. It's always 1 less than your degree. So now we got that complete, we want to do the behaviors. And the behaviors are going to allow us to know what the graph looks like as it crosses the x-axis at these particular numbers. So let's go ahead and start that. We want to do the behavior at x equals 0. So behavior at x equals 0. Now, the way you do that is you want to uh, put in a 0 into all the x's, except for the one that's going to cancel everything out and give you a 0. So for, I don't want to put a zero in the first x because if I do, zero times anything is all zero. We did that already with the y-intercept. So instead, what we do is we keep, we leave that alone. We put point to x there, just leave it, and we're going to put zeros in for the other ones. Okay, so we put zeros in the other ones, but we don't put a zero in that, that one there. We leave it as just regular x because then, when we simplify it, we'll be able to get an x for our answer. Now this part's going to give you a 4, and this part's going to give you an 8. You want to take 8 and 4, multiply it together, and then multiply it by 0.2. The resulting thing that you get is you're going to get 6.4x when you multiply all that together. 4, 8, and 0.2, you get 6.4x. So therefore, that's what your behavior is going to look like when it crosses the x-axis at zero. Now 6.4x, what that is, is that's a line with a positive slope. Anytime you have x to the first power, it'll be a line. Because the first number is positive, we know that it's going to be a line slanting to the right. If it was a negative, we would slant it to the left. But this one, we're going to slant it to the right. And that little sketch will look something like that. Now next, we want to find the behavior at two. Okay, so when we do this one, we're going to put a 2 into the first one and the last one, but not the middle one. If we put 2 in the middle one, it's just going to give us a 0 for the entire thing. And our behavior is never going to be just all cancel out and give us a 0. Got to have an x in there for part of it. So you're going to put a, a 2 into the first x. We're not going to do anything with this one. We'll put also a 2 into the last one. And like before, you want to simplify this. So this part, 2 plus 2, uh, that's going to give us 4 uh, cubed. And then you're going to multiply that by the other two pieces that are there. And so when you get, when you get done uh, doing all that and multiply it out, what you're going to get is 25.6, and we have x minus 2 squared. Okay, that's what you get when you, when you multiply all that out. Okay, so uh, this right here would be the behavior equation. This will look like when it crosses the x-axis at 2. So I'm going to put that in there, 25.6x minus 2 squared. Let's talk about what that one looks like. It's a square. Square we've, talked, we've been talking about already on this test. So anytime you have an x squared, it's going to be a parabola shape. Because there's a positive number in front, we know it's going to open up. 
If there was a negative in front, it would open down. But in this case, um, because we have that, it's going to open up and look like that. So I have a, a U shaped on this one. Now we have one more behavior to find, and that's going to be the behavior at uh, negative 2. So for negative 2, I'm going to put that in the first and second one, but not the last one, because otherwise it would cancel it out and I would get a 0. Okay, so I'm going to do 0.2 times negative 2, and then I'm going to do negative 2 minus 2 squared, and then I have the, the last one left over. This part is going to give us 16, negative 4 squared, that's positive 16 we get from that. We're multiplying it by negative 2, and then we're multiplying that by 0.2. So if you multiply all those together, what you're going to end up with is a negative number, negative x plus 2 uh, cubed we get uh, for that one. And that's what's going to go here. So I get y is equal to negative 6.4 times x plus 2 cubed. So we got to think about what a negative cube is going to look like. Now I know a positive cube, positive cube normally looks like that, but then I need to flip it because I have a negative in front. So if I flip that one, now it's going to look like this. So this is what it'll look like on the end. It's, it's this one flipped over, which will give you that one. So now I have all this complete. I'm ready now to get to do the graph. So let me erase some of this here so we have some space for the graph. I'm going to leave the, I'm leaving the behaviors up there because that's what's going to help me in order to draw, draw the sketch of the graph. So let's first begin um, by putting down the intercepts. So I have my intercepts are 0, 2, and negative 2. So I'm going to plot those to start out with. My y-intercept is 0, 0. So I already have that one. Now, at each of these, I'm going to put in these little sketches that I previously did for the behaviors. The first one was for x is equal to 0. So when it crosses that x equals 0, it's going to look like this. It's going to be a line slanting to the right. So I'll go ahead and I'll just draw that in like that. The next one we had was the behavior at 2. So behavior at 2 was a parabola shape that's opening up. So I'm going to draw that one right here. Then the behavior at negative 2 looks like this negative cube graph. So I'll draw that little sketch in right there. Now for the rest of it, something that I didn't ask you for in the test, but something you also want to need to know in order to graph these is talking about those end behavior models. So I talked about those earlier in the lecture notes for this particular section. We talked about whether your degree is odd or even, and if that leading coefficient is positive or negative. For this case, the degree was, uh, so we have n is even, by adding that we had a degree of 6. Now the a of n, let's talk about what that is. Now the a of n is, would be the, if I multiplied all this stuff together, it would be the number in front of the x that would have a power of 6. So instead of multiplying all that out, we can actually do that by just an analyzing each number. This number is positive, the, the one in front of the x is positive, the number in front of the x there is positive. All that is positive or multiplying together, so that's going to tell me that my a of n is going to be greater than zero. And from my n behavior models, that says that it should look like this, two arrows opening up. So I know the graph is going to open up like this, and this is going to open up like that. Now I'm ready to, to fill in the blanks to fill in the rest of this. So now I know this is going to come down. It's going to go through that little bend in the graph there. It's going to go down to a certain amount. It'll have to curve and come back up through here. It'll curve again and come down through there. And then it's going to go uh, back up here and look something like that. So that's what the completed graph would look like. Notice that this is not going to look exactly the same as the one I have in the, uh, the answer key because the answer key I graphed it exactly. So I'm not looking for the exact graph, I'm only looking for a sketch. That's why if you notice here I didn't put any y scale on there because I'm not going to know how high or how low that goes unless I plot points which defeats the whole purpose of doing this. I'm just looking for general sketch of this only so even though it doesn't look exactly like the one 
in the answer key. I'm just looking for the general shape. Do you have a bend here? Do you have a parabola over here? So as long as it looks like that, that's fine. Now, if you have a, a shape like this in the test where you have a, 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 uh, a cube looking graph, make sure you exaggerate this bend because if you don't and you just kind of draw a straight line through, I might mark it wrong because if it looks like this, instead of bending it like it should, I may mark it wrong. So make sure you highlight and kind of exaggerate that bend in the graph that you show there with the cube.